the Andrew Mellon Foundation is um, uh, substantially different, although I've just learned about a bunch of overlaps uh, in uh, projects that we have both funded. Uh, the Mellon Foundation decided in uh, uh, late 19, well, early 1979 to switch from policy research to uh, basic research and interdisciplinary research in the functioning of ecosystems and primarily plant ecosystems. And the program has been limited to that, uh, or the main part of it, uh, basically ever since. That would seem a little bit counterintuitive, but um, Paul Mellon, our founder, thought that uh, was interested in landscapes and uh, realized that what characterized most of the landscapes that he was most interested in was the plant communities. And the basic research piece came because the chairman of our board was uh, William O. Baker, who was the president of Bell Labs and uh, during its golden age. So the argument for basic research was a fairly easy one. Um, We've uh, tried a, a number of different things, and let me just uh, run through our experience and what we think we've observed, if not learned, from the process. Um, innovation often exists outside of established programs, and not the least of the reasons for that is professionals can tend to be captive of their training. Uh, and to go back to an example that's old enough so it wouldn't offend anyone, um, in the 1970s, I well remember Gilbert White, a member of the Academy, trying to convince the Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Forest Service that non-structural responses to uh, their mission were uh, at least as effective, if not more effective, than the structural uh, steps they were taking. Um, the other thing is that very often doing interdisciplinary research involves groups. That is, uh, multiple investigators from multiple institutions uh, because you need a mix of expertise and techniques to address a lot of these questions. So uh, we then looked at kinds of innovation, and I'll run through a couple and some, uh, some examples in no particular order or uh, level of merit, but in terms of innovative institutions, uh, lately the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, uh, NCS, the, Nas uh, the National uh, Center for uh, Environmental Assessment and Synthesis, the Carnegie Institution of Washington's Department of Plant Biology, and one favorite, and I've just come to an overlap, is South African National Parks. The South African National Park System uh, came upon a, 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 an astounding realization. They had a lot of research needs and not much research money, but there were, uh, their flagship park, Kruger National Park, is variously compared in size to the state of Massachusetts or the country of Israel. Um, they realized that uh, so they didn't have any money, but they had a neat place to do research. So if they made it an attractive and easy place for university researchers to do their research, uh, the university researchers would come. Uh, and they also realized they couldn't tell the university researchers what to do, but if they entrained them and the university researchers uh, returned over a period of time, the university researchers would internalize the park's problems and begin studying them. That's, um, I have to say, worked like a charm. And the overlap is the, the astounding new tool that helps knit all that together better than anything ever did before is the Carnegie Airborne Observatory, which is working in its, I guess, fourth year um, in Kruger National Park. The evidence is I've just come from their annual science meeting. Uh, it's become a, a, an item of national policy in South Africa that the parks will provide research sites and opportunities for university researchers throughout the park system. They have staff dedicated to doing that, making it easy for the university researchers. And at this last meeting, there were 240 researchers from, I think, 60 countries, uh, most of them not funded by the park system, certainly not funded by the Mellon Foundation, cooperating 
and they reported that there are about three, three to 400 active university research projects in the park system at any one time. And the other interesting thing is when they make ma management decisions, they use the university researchers to sit on panels to help them make the management decisions and to reevaluate them. So I, th um, to me, that's one of the more exciting uh, steps forward in ecology in a long time. Um, the other kind of uh, groups are uh, investigator formed groups that we're particularly happy about. And my examples of those are the Hubbard Brook Ecosystem Study of uh, uh, Herb Borman and Gene Likens began, the Hawaii Ecosystem Study that Peter Vitusik and Pam Matson began, and PISCO, the, the cooperative of coastal ecosystem researchers that was primarily put together by Jane Lubchenco. Um, then there are tools, and uh, we've invested at different times in tools uh, that would help move forward the kinds of research we were trying to, uh, to encourage, and here again we come to uh, uh, some overlaps, um, introducing mass spectrometers to ecologists that many years ago the Carnegie Airborne Observatory, my current favorite, and the other one for ecology least that has changed the way ecologists do their work was JSTOR. Um, in terms of how we go about funding, um, we, after a bunch of experience, we think it's very hard for committees to fund innovative research. Uh, there are just too many opportunities for reasonable questions that knock out uh, very promising ideas. Uh, the, the selection of the ideas, I think, requires instinct, risk, as you've heard, um, the, and it uh, requires a lot of time because, you, I th in my experience, you really need to go and talk to the researchers and listen to them because often the, the best idea in a, in a proposal isn't the subject of the proposal. There, there's something hidden in there that's really good and the, uh, the researcher is just conditioned to uh, go after things that they think are fundable. Um, the other is established scientists can be stuck in the research train that got them their reputation and career. The ones that aren't are, uh, we think, fairly obvious. So one of the, uh, our approaches is to give those researchers in our field money, uh, but money for uh, postdocs and doctoral students, uh, trusting them to find the money for their research, but to give them the opportunity to bring young scientists along. Uh, one of the most productive places we look um, are young scientists in their first tenure track position. So after the young scientist gets a job, gets the startup package from her or his university, uh, we'll put up research money to allow them to really pursue their wilder research ideas. Um, I think that uh, the U.S. is a particularly good place to do this. Uh, many of the other places where I've worked, uh, the scientists focus on explanations, whereas in the U.S. it's always the next question. And I think an easy way for me to illustrate that is to say that uh, many of the scientists elsewhere uh, will say, let me paint you a picture of how this works. And the U.S. scientists tend to say, what's wrong with this picture? Um, and I, I guess Tommy Edmondson, one of the mentors of our program and a member of the Academy, once said that uh, what we're trying to do is understand Mother Nature rather than reform her. Um, so we're in, in looking at individuals, we're looking for a person with skills and instinct, a person that has a position that would allow them to pursue the research they're interested in, and a person with the support of her or his institution that uh, would allow them to get over uh, administrative and other obstacles when those occur. Very hard to do that, I think, based on paper proposals. Uh, we spend a lot of time traveling and talking and to researchers and listening to them um, and looking for that 
key idea that someone has that isn't really um, highlighted. And the, one of the ways I've tried to explain that to researchers is I want to know the best idea they ever had that has no chance of being funded. Um, when we do provide support, uh, it is usually flexible. We allow uh, redirection. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, fund the exploration of an idea rather than the following of a protocol that we've agreed upon. Um, often the research needs to be sustained. What we're really doing is investing in people's careers. Uh, and our trustees are very good because, again, like the Keck Foundation, they firmly believe that if we don't make any mistakes, we're not being um, uh, innovative enough or adventurous enough. They actually do, given the heritage of Bell Labs value negative results. They don't just say they do. Um, and our evaluation is the careers of the people we've tried to help.